To get forests integrated in the landscape, we need mosaics in most landscapes. Integrating into farmland is a good solution. So we started exploring nearly a year ago, could we look at farm plans to be carbon neutral within the farm. So not offsetting off site, but be carbon neutral within the farm. Looking into Canterbury Plains, we can see there got a high plains and low plains band from the districts. And these are the soils and the well-drained plains. Well-drained, yes. The land typing shows it. See the bright green, that's the low altitude plains landscape type, the broad scale, and then down to the low plains and high plains within that. And you see those mapped out for that type of country and the data shows the biodiversity that belongs there and those, so you can see in these high plains, the fans there that naturally have beech and mixed potocarp hardwood forest, the outwash terraces there with the Kanuka and the mixed potocarp forest. So those different sorts of lands. And I think it's really useful to apply those down to the farm scale. Again, I'd like Lynn's to be making an accessible information base. Then here looking at an individual farm on terraces to a river. It's a 700 hectare farm with those pivots and then you can see the brighter green within two of them where there's effluent irrigated from dairy sheds. So there are two dairy farms there and then there's dry land, the brown paddocks, the non-irrigated dry lands and the lighter green irrigated with K-lines. What are the emissions in the current regime? This dairy farm, 700 hectares, supporting 1,200 cows. It's generating milk as well as um, you know, some meat and some chips. But it's also the methane, the carbon dioxide and the nitrous oxide. So there's the quantums of those. What we've done is stage one plan, looking at that dairy farm, still with those pivots, still with that effluent irrigated, but with plantings introduced. The dark green, the native free vegetation around the pivots and tree crop plantings around these ones sort of in the middle, like walnut crops and so on. And then the lines through the pivots, woody food forest bands crops, food crops. There we've got native vegetation established especially on the terrace scarps and then around the pivots tree crops or native forest and picking up on the nature of the place from the uh, land typing and so on. And I'm sure the cows would be happy with that. And then these bands of food forests through and also blended pasture. So instead of pure ryegrass, which you know is high in carbon, instead of that, remember when we used to have clovers and you know we used to have good diverse pastures, didn't we? So getting back to diverse pastures, blended pasture, and that can make quite a difference. So in looking at that and our woody forest food bands with their roots going down and those lines intercepting groundwater flows of nutrients. Here's all the species we could use. Then a second stage, adding devices. A biodigester, putting half the cows in a herd home for half the year full time and the other half the year half time and feeding a biodigester so that then that takes your carbon dioxide and your um, nitrous oxide emissions and makes that into fuel to feed the milking shed, the cut and carry to feed the cows in the barns and provide energy. We can have electric vehicles doing the work on the farm as well as running the milking shed and everything. It's happening, I was on a dairy farm this week with a guy who said he's organising to get a biodigester 
to real opportunity. Going to the third stage, with this energy producing, if you put all the cows into the herd home for the winter and half the summer, so that the 75% house, then the energy you produce can then produce other things like heat greenhouses and do all sorts of things. So you can get a multiple cropping situation, have a diverse product off a farm.